It looks like we may have round, what is this, round three of the coronavirus. The stock market is broadly selling off across the board. We have the Dow Jones down 2.7%, the S&P 500 down 2.25%, and the NASDAQ down 2.1%. All three major indices are down well over 2%. And my portfolio likewise is down a whopping $8,400 today, which is 2.38%. Now there's even a greater dichotomy in certain types of stocks. Peloton, for example, which is considered one of those stay at home stocks, is up 4% today. When the overall market's down 2.5%, this company's up 4%. Netflix is another stay-at-home stock. That one's up 1.5%. Costco's another one that's done really well during the pandemic. This one is still in the green by just a smidget. Vici, which is one of my biggest holdings and the owner of many convention centers and places where people meet in person, is down 3.36%. And then the worst hit are the travel stocks. Delta Airlines is down 12.59%. That is a massive drop in one day. Now, what is causing investors to react this way? Well, of course, the new COVID variant. There is new news that there's a COVID variant that's heavily mutated spreading in South Africa. In this video, we're gonna go over all of it, all the details that we know so far, and what I'm doing with my portfolio as a response. Let's first start off with what the scientists have actually found in South Africa. Scientists studying the coronavirus genome in South Africa found a small but rapidly rising number of COVID-19 cases associated with the new coronavirus variant. Now this new variant has an unusually large number of mutations, around 50, including more than 30 on the spike protein, through which the virus attaches to human cells and which is the main target for many current COVID-19 vaccines. The new version of the virus is identified as B.1.1.529 and is likely to be designated as the new variant, a new variant. It's named after the 13th letter in the Greek alphabet. Now here's the part that's really important. They don't know what this variant's mutations will have an effect on. They don't know if it's gonna be really faster spreading or it's gonna be more evasive to vaccines, but they say that the scientists are alarmed by the number of changes compared with the original virus and by the rapid increase in cases in South Africa since the strain was first detected. So this thing is heavily mutated and it's spreading rapidly in South Africa. And those two things are raising alarm bells with scientists. Now, of course, this is raising alarm bells with scientists, but it also is with investors. Stocks are dropping, oil's dropping, treasury yields are sliding as investors are seeking less risky assets. You can see the companies like Costco and Netflix are being propped up and ones that are higher risk or travel oriented are being crushed. You can get an idea of how broad the market sell-off is. Almost every company's in the red despite a few that seem to be the ones that actually benefit from people staying home. That is maybe companies like Netflix or EA Games and Take-Two, gaming companies, streaming companies, they're gonna do just fine even if we have another strain of COVID. Now, part of what makes this even more complicated than the first coronavirus, than the original, is that we don't have the ability to respond the same way we did originally. The thing that we did the first time was we lowered interest rates, we printed trillions of dollars, and the central government gave out lots of money, lots of unemployment, halted student payments, and all sorts of economic stimulus. Well, we can't really do that a second time. The government doesn't have the leverage or the money to give out trillions and trillions of dollars. And inflation is already a concern. Inflation is running at around 6%, 5% year over year. And the government can't respond the same way, giving out trillions of dollars more, which would make inflation possibly explode. So one of my main concerns is, if this coronavirus does cause widespread lockdowns again, the government's not gonna be able to help us in the same way because inflation is already so high. Now, with that being said, what am I doing with my portfolio? Well, it's not what am I doing right now, but what I have been doing for the past year with my portfolio, preparing me for events like this. I've known for a while that the market doesn't go up forever. It's been going up for a long time. So a 2% sell-off, first of all, psychologically, doesn't affect me at all. This is a very minor sell-off in the grand scheme of things, and it's really not a big deal. And my portfolio is a collection of what I consider to be highly concentrated positions in world-class companies that can outlive any type of environment. Look at the companies that I'm invested in in the tech and cloud computing category. Just Apple and Microsoft. Do you think that COVID is really gonna hurt Apple and Microsoft? I don't think so. I think that either of these companies will do just fine. I don't have the slightest concern here. In the consumer category, we have Costco, in my opinion, one of the most perfect businesses that exist. I think that Costco could possibly be the perfect business and it's not gonna be affected by COVID. We've already seen this play out before. There's a reason why Costco investors are extremely reluctant to give up their shares. Even though the company's overpriced, even though it's overvalued, this is where investors seek safety. They go to stocks like Costco, knowing that it is a rock solid business. The companies that I own that will face downward pressure in the meantime are Disney. 
This is one that has the parks. And of course, those are going to be under pressure if there's a new COVID variant causing lockdowns. But Disney has a ton of online properties. They have Disney Plus, ESPN Plus, they have Hulu, and they're growing all three of these properties pretty rapidly. So I'm still not bearish on Disney. I think that over time, given the long time horizon, 10 years out, this company will be much bigger than it is today. So any downward pricing pressure, in my opinion, is caused by short-term trading. A lot of the market is unapologetically short-term. They're traders. They trade in and out of positions short term, and that's fine. But that's not my game plan. I'll continue to hold Disney even if this stock trades down 50%. The other big companies that are exposed to COVID are all the real estate companies. Vici, Store Capital, Realty Income Corp, Simon Property. All of these are exposed, and Simon Property is getting hit the hardest today. This is the most volatile. Overall, I'm still bullish on all of these companies. I think that given enough time, whether it takes a year or two years, will want to do things in person. We've already seen the pent up demand this year. If it's further delayed of us being able to go out and experience things, I think there'll be even more pent up demand. These again are long-term holdings for me. And long-term holdings mean anywhere from around three to 10 years. If I thought that the coronavirus would last more than three years or more than five years, they'll probably not perform well if the coronavirus hangs around for half a decade. But I don't anticipate that happening. The other category that's down big today is in the fintech and banking category. JP Morgan is down three and a half percent today. That's normal trading. When there's any type of scary news and the possibility of the economy going into recession, banks and financial companies are gonna be the first hit. So if you're concerned about the potential of recession, banks and financial institutions are not what you wanna hold. That's why investors look carefully about the future prospects of the economy before investing in banks. Now, I also know that some of you are curious of what I did with my Visa and MasterCard. I recently sold out of those two companies and I put that money into Microsoft. I feel more bullish on Microsoft than I do on Visa and MasterCard. I feel like the valuation makes more sense and I feel like Microsoft is far more recession resistant. So all around, I have a much higher conviction on Microsoft than I did either Visa or MasterCard. So I feel very good about that trade. So all in all, that's my update for today. I just wanted to jump in, make sort of an emergency video, just going over this new variant, what it means and what I'm doing with my portfolio. That's it for now, but I'll have further updates as we get more data and more details about this new variant. So check in on the next episode and I'll be able to give you more information. So I'll see you in the next episode.